Hi and welcome to week three, unit four, where we will look at the sample solution of the rebate engine code. And actually, we don't want to look at the code itself because we showed you the code to begin with and every implementation is different, but the most important structural elements you have seen in the beginning anyway. But I want to show you a class diagram to show what are the main elements and what they roughly look like. So starting from the left, there is a UI. We didn't look at that at all, but you may have looked at the interface. So how to interface a component and uh, you see the items that the UI uh, yeah, that are in the shop class or shop interface uh, that the UI uses to talk to the shop and you see the actions on there, um, add an item, buy the cart and so forth. Um, <clears throat> on the shop side, let's skip that for now. The focus was on the rebate engine. So there you see the rebate engine, that's what we started with. And there you see a class rule provider. So I don't know if you did that or not, but um, the idea was um, to say, okay, where do the rules come from? they have to be loaded somewhere in the real application of course you want that from the database and there's an edit over uh, UI for this and so forth of course we don't have that so in uh, our sample implementation that you can find by the way in your code there is um, the uh, WCTR reference implementation that you can look at um, there you can see all the code in full detail uh, the rule provider is basically a class which creates the rules that you see in the ASE shop demo interface mm -hmm. in the reference implementation. So in, in your class, it would be whatever rules you put there to begin with that have, you know, not, it's not test specific, but something you would just put in a demo. Um, and then you see below the rule base class. The rule base class we saw before, it has uh, the methods, it had the apply method at first, mm -hmm. but it probably has something now as well that has to do with um, is the rule applicable? Is it from the validity, validity period, yeah. period, right? Mm -hmm. So you remember, and you saw when you did the exercises, uh, each rule has a validity period, so a time from, from to when it applies, and it has to be checked, and it's the same for all rules, so what's the same for all should be in the base class because it also has uh, the code, of course, you can share, so that would be in the base class as well. And then, um, we started with the item ID case in the implementation. That's the class on the bottom. And you see this little arrow going to the base, which is the UML notation for inheritance. So that inherits from the base class. And um, again, if you did the backlog very quickly already, I think the second or third item, um, there was this case of category. So not just an item ID, but things that the category field that whatever matches there is also has, then the rules apply. And so these um, category or item or, in, and of course in the required quantity form the trigger conditions um, that the rule fires basically. And of course they're different. So the classes has to be different, but they can have the same base class. If you came to the part that um, the cart level rules you implemented, so then you can say things like, if you buy more than $100 worth of whatever, then you get some rebate. So that you cannot put this rule on an individual item because it doesn't apply to an item but to the whole cart. So you need a separate rule set and you need a separate loop, right? And so this then is rule cart total and then maybe there's different types. You can maybe have put them all in there, but it's definitely a separate, separate class. Mm -hmm. But again, it has an apply method, even though it's applied to the whole cart. Yeah, and those is really, um, the, everything that really matters, the rebate reason, you may have done this kind of collecting the reasons of the rebate so that the customer sees, oh, why did I get so, you know, this was that promotion or something that you can have this text flow back as well that the rule can say why it fired mm. and that you can show this in the UI, but that's really a, a small thing. And uh, you might also have uh, separated what we have here in this rule item ID, give a fixed amount back or give a percentage of something mm -hmm. back. Uh, that could also be two classes and you might have two classes that's also correct to do it like that. That's just a matter mm -hmm. of how you design it. Yeah. Right. So this is only a sample solution and your solution might look different and uh, but it's also correct. So yeah. don't be surprised if this doesn't look exactly what your solution looks like. This is only to give you a hint if uh, yeah, if, if you had troubles, then this is one solution, mm -hmm. but it's not the only one, and it's definitely also not the perfect one. It's just one of many right. possible solutions. If it passes the tests that are correct for the backlog, it's a good implementation. Yes. And so um, 
If you want, again, this is the overview. If you want, uh, well, actually, I kind of recommend it. Uh, look at the reference implementation and especially also at the tests of the reference implementation, but also the code. So you see both, again, you see both how they work together and how easy it becomes then to write yet another test case yeah. uh, when you wrote the code in a testable way. They can learn from that. Yeah. And uh, coming back to that island of happiness, so the right side, that's your island of happiness. Mm -hmm. And then you see the connection between the shopping cart and uh, the rebate engine. That is your integration part. So mm -hmm. really uh, a small integration to the existing code mm -hmm. so that you don't have to change this big legacy code thing uh, where you might not know all the, the side effects if you change something. So very... Um, yeah, very uh, thoughtful and small integration mm -hmm. um, represented here by one right. tiny line. Yeah, but that's the integration part. Yeah. And this is an ideal case kind of where you have from the existing system one call into your new component that does something and gets your result back. That's ideal, of course. That's a nice little, uh, very narrow interface. Sometimes you need more, but of course it's a great goal to strive for. Yeah. And um, so for this step, this is enough. In uh, the next week, we'll look at test isolation in more depth, and then you will see what can I do if I want to write an integration test that uses the Revit engine, but um, the legacy code doesn't let me isolate certain things, and we'll come to that whole topic of isolation in uh, existing code later on. But for now, I hope you enjoyed living on the island of happiness, and actually it's uh, not just a joke, if you think about development and um, coming back to the arguments of efficiency and benefits and everything, most bugs are make, uh, made, put in, when you write new code, obviously. That's always the case, and you find them later on, and then hopefully it becomes less and less. So if you write this way, uh, develop this way, you have a lot less bugs typically to find later on, which means the benefit is right there, and this is the best place to learn unit testing, test-driven development, or whatever, when you write new features and you write them in an isolated way, and then you plug them in. Because then, number one, you didn't have all the trouble to deal with hooking up all the time considering the legacy code environment and its constraints. You have clean code, you can structure well, you have a narrow interface, and because you develop this way, you have few bugs in this place, and then can focus in the integration lo uh, test later on just on does the flow work. Yeah. So, so then... This was the last unit for this week. Uh, then your weekly assignment uh, is waiting for you, and we see you next week. If you have questions or had questions, you um, also, of course, could have used the forum, but also for the questions, of course, in the assignment, you can always use the forum. Yeah. See you next week. See you next week.